We're back at the Airs' Restoration Center to check in with our SPD-1 restoration. As you can see, the biggest change since last time is that the SPD is back on its own wheels, having been removed from the rotisserie. This has allowed our volunteers better access to inside the fuselage as well as access to the firewall. Perhaps the most eye-catching update is the painted tail. This red, white and blue tail is a little preview of the bold and beautiful paint scheme chosen for this restoration. Since last time we visited, the SBD's engine has been successfully mounted onto its stand, allowing the team to begin attaching the engine accessories. I caught up with Terry to see how the engine team was getting on. Well, we put that, um, all this section on yesterday when I was here. And um, so we just, we got it turning and um, got uh, some touch up done on that uh, equipment that will all go on here. And I guess we're gonna start on that today. Yeah, so it should be fun. This is my favorite part, the engine. <laughs> Well, because there's so many different things that go to it and there's a lot of things that we um, have to make um, and that's always fun too, you know, so um, always learning something here and that's a big part that I enjoy. On this engine, the Wright R1820 Cyclone, the engine accessories are mounted to the rear. These include the carburetor, magnetos, generator, starters, among others. Each component needs to be carefully installed into its specific place, ensuring that when installed, the engine is still able to be turned over. Our volunteers will have this engine completely restored relatively soon, but it'll be a little while yet before it gets mounted to our SBD. One corner of the Airzoo's restoration center has been the home of the Dive Flap team, who have been restoring and sometimes recreating the SBD's most iconic feature. This is the upper left flap. And as soon as we get this riveted, we're going to stick it on the wing over here so we can match up to the aileron we're building. And I can see you've got some additional ones hidden behind that wing there. Yeah, they're hidden up there in the rack. Obviously. Which number is this? This the... is the last one. This is the fifth one. Fifth one. So we're kind of excited to get this finished. Phil, let me ask you a question. Yes. Every time I visited you so far, you guys are using the old kind of fashion Rosie the Rivet guns. Okay. Why are you using a different one here and what's the difference? If you look at the, where you're riveting, okay, you always want to squeeze, but squeeze is more accurate and it's much more forgiving. It's much easier to squeeze than it is to buck. Bucking is what we call it when you use a rivet gun and a bucking box. So you only buck when you can't get to it with the squeezer and you have no alternative. Because bucking is the easiest way to make a mistake is bucking a rivet. So squeeze first if you can and then buck. I think we got one more down there. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, that's nice. As one team works on the dive flaps, another works on the assembly that deploys them. Although our volunteers are often too polite to say it, restoration can be dirty, tedious work. It takes time and patience repairing the many dents, dings, and holes this SBD picked up on its journey to the bottom of Lake Michigan. What are we doing today? What job have you got today? Well, we're fixing some of the minor holes in the body and dents, trying to smooth things out, make it look a little better. Now, were these holes and dents that you created? No, these were corrosion or damage during the uh, crashing of the plane. So, but a lot of real fine little pin holes that we're finding in here that we have to fix. Otherwise, once we paint it, it'll just magnify it. So, so. Just kind of got to go over it with a fine tooth comb and every time you think you got it, you find another one. Just like right here. Little teeny, little teeny holes like yeah. that. Is this uh, tedious work? Oh yeah, yep. But it's got to be done. So, and it's nothing like the smell of Bondo in the morning. <laughs> yep. A lot of sanding, a lot of hand sanding and feathering out. But if you don't do it that way, it doesn't, it doesn't turn out good. Sometimes panels are too damaged to be fully restored and have to be recreated by our team. Kevin has been working on this very complicated piece of metal where the horizontal stabilizer meets the fuselage. 
this is the original. So I I formed this on by making it a mold and then form that over that. So this is originally flat aluminum. We formed it over that. So it's just a it's just a bondo buck is really what it is. And by form is that just hitting it with a hammer? Well annealing the metal by getting it hot and softening it and then pounding it out on that form. It's pretty soft metal to begin with but it had to be annealed to get it a little softer. Okay? But I used the original pieces, these original pieces, to create a mold in plaster and then made that, filled that mold with the Bonda, okay? Now I'm trying to get this to fit, which is a struggle because it's never going to be perfect, but it's close. Are these, you know, complicated bits of metal? Are these like the most frustrating parts of restoration? Um, I don't know. It's pretty obvious that's a pretty complicated curve. Yeah, to come up with that, that's pretty difficult. Everything else is pretty. I don't know if anything is that that curve. I mean, you have, you have a, a single curve here. This is fairly complicated to do that. They had large presses to do those, so we don't have the large press. But those can be more difficult. The, the Wildcat we did, we did that with fiberglass. It was so difficult. But this is the most difficult that I've done on here. I, I would think. Uh, getting it to fit, that's the key. And is this your first, you know, attempt at this, or is this like attempt three, four, five? Uh, the, I made a, I did a trial one. I'm um, just out of some thinner metal. This is the first attempt. That seems to be working. It fits. It fits pretty close. And then I cut a pattern off the actual horizontal stabilizer to see if we're in the right realm. And, and we're pretty close. So, looks like it's gonna work. How many, how many hours have you put into that one bit of metal so far? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe 25, 30 at the most. 25 maybe. And how many more to go do you think? Five, ten, maybe. Dan is working on the same piece for the other side of the aircraft. No, I didn't have to. I, I used an old part that was heavily corroded and getting it to where I can use it. But it's taken a lot of effort to, to make this usable. Are you almost there or...? Is the end close? Or? Um, it's close. I've got a few more hours of working on it here, smoothing out all my uh, Bondo here and get it ready for paint. Is this the type of work you enjoy or would you prefer to be doing something else? Oh no, I love doing this. I spent 41 years working on airplanes and retired here a year and a half ago and decided to come over here and volunteer because I, I enjoy doing it. Yeah. You were talking to Kevin. He's working on the left side. I'm, yeah. This is the right side. It goes right here. He made his from scratch, yeah. and I'm reusing the old one. And once it's painted, it'll look just like it belongs there. Wonderful. Well, thank you for showing me. Yep. Work continues on this SPD-1 Dauntless. Stay tuned for more updates throughout the year including our next restoration project. If you want to see this SBD's progress, then follow the AirZoo on social media, and don't forget that you can actually visit our restoration center. You can plan your visit today at airzoo.org slash plan your visit. I'll see you next time.